Do you want to truly walk in the power of the Holy Spirit? Let's look to Jesus as our primary example. If you enjoy the power of the Holy Spirit and you want to know more about the Holy Spirit, then subscribe to Encounter TV and click that notification bell when you do subscribe so that you can receive notices whenever we release new content. You can also follow us wherever you're watching us. The power of the Holy Spirit is the key to the Christian life. Without the Holy Spirit, we are helpless to do anything for God. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, we're helpless to please God. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, we can't truly pray. We can't truly evangelize. We can't truly understand the truths of Scripture. Without the power of the Holy Spirit, we can do nothing that counts for eternity. That power was the very same that caused the early church to rise in the face of persecution. That power is the very same that gave the martyrs the ability and grace to lay down their lives for the cause of Christ. And that power is available to you. And we look to Jesus as our primary example of how to walk in this power. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, we see that Jesus was conceived in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when, as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Now, really think about that. Jesus was conceived in the power of the Holy Spirit. The incomprehensible God, the Word of God, became flesh by the power of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Spirit did this to such perfection with such detail that he left nothing out. He took God who was eternity and put him into a body. He took the mind of God, which is all-knowing, the power of God, which is unlimited. He took the will of God, the ways of God, the nature of God, and he breathed into a physical being. The Holy Spirit took God himself and placed him into a body. It was by the power of the Holy Spirit that the Creator stepped into creation, that eternity stepped into time. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus was conceived in this power. Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And His work was so complete. The work of the Holy Spirit was so complete that the Scripture says in John 14, 9, Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Colossians 2.9 declares, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Think about that. The fullness of who God is dwelling in a physical body. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. That's the mystery of the incarnation. Truly God truly man. Now, Philippians chapter 2 says something very interesting. I'm going to start at verse 6. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Now, let me be very clear here because sometimes there's confusion surrounding this portion of Scripture, and I don't want to cause any confusion. So let me be clear. Jesus was always God. Jesus always knew He was God. Before the world began, He was God. When He was a baby in the womb, He was God. When He died on the cross, He was God. When He resurrected and ascended, He was God. From beginning to end, He was, He is God. There was never a moment where Jesus wasn't God. When you look at Philippians chapter 2, a truth is revealed. We see that Jesus gave up certain divine privileges. This does not mean that he ceased to be God, but he, by his own will, set aside the use of certain powers and abilities and traits. Think about the fact that you can't kill God, yet Jesus died. God is complete, 
yet Jesus grew. Luke 2.52 says that Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and favor with God and favor with man. Think about that. He grew in wisdom. God who is wise, God who is all-knowing, grew in wisdom. What a thought. He grew in stature. That makes more sense. Physical body. He was given one and he grew in stature. He grew in favor with God. God grew in favor with God and with man. So though Jesus was God at all times, because he set aside certain uses of certain powers and abilities and traits, he grew. He was able to grow. God is complete, yet Jesus grew. No doubt, Jesus chose to strip himself of certain divine privileges. Hebrews 2.14 says this, Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil who had the power of death. So Jesus was conceived in the power of the Holy Spirit. He gave up certain traits and certain powers by his own choice. And at any moment, he could have picked them up on his own. So how did he carry out his ministry? Upon what did he rely? Jesus received his power from the Holy Spirit. Matthew 3.16 says, after his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. Soon after this, of course, we know that Jesus began his ministry. Isaiah the prophet tells us of the Holy Spirit resting on Jesus. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 2 says, Then a shoot will spring from the stem of Jesse, and a branch from his roots will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. The Holy Spirit enabled Jesus to do many things. Isaiah 61.1 says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released and prisoners will be freed. Jesus even cast out demons by the power of the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 12, verse 28 says, and this is Jesus speaking, But if I am casting out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. Jesus healed the sick by the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 10, verse 38, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Jesus preached by the power of the Holy Spirit. We saw that in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. Now think about this. Jesus wasn't just conceived in the power of the Holy Spirit. He didn't just preach in the power of the Holy Spirit. He didn't just heal the sick in the power of the Holy Spirit and drive out demons in the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was also raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 1, verse 4 says, And he was shown to be the Son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Romans 8, 11, a very famous scripture says this, The Spirit of God, who raised Jesus from the dead, lives in you. Hebrews 5, 7, while Jesus was here on earth, he offered prayers and pleadings with a loud cry and tears to the one who could rescue him from death. And God heard his prayers because of his deep reverence for God. Think about the kind of trust that Jesus placed in the Holy Spirit. Think about the fact that for all of eternity, there was perfect union between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Not a single point of division. Perfect unity, perfect fellowship. And they were disconnected. Jesus was forsaken when he died upon the cross. Life himself died. Eternity himself faced the end of his time. But light himself stepped into darkness. Now think about that because, as I said, they were in perfect unity. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. The spirit left. 
My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? The Father forsook him. The Spirit left him, the Father forsook him. There was a disconnect that took place that you and I might be connected with God. But think about this reality now. Jesus, giving his life upon the cross, trusting in the power of the Holy Spirit to raise him. No wonder he was sweating drops of blood in the garden. No wonder he said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass. Jesus allowed himself to take a divine trust fall into the grave, and he trusted that the Holy Spirit would catch him. This is true trust in the Holy Spirit. This is true reliance upon the Spirit of God. Eternity himself subjecting himself to death and then saying within himself, I will trust the Holy Spirit to raise me. Believer, if Jesus trusted the Holy Spirit, how much more should we? Believer, the Father trusted the Holy Spirit with his Son. And the Son trusts the Holy Spirit with his church, you and I. The Holy Spirit is reliable. Jesus relied upon Him for power. Jesus relied upon Him for resurrection life, that miracle of resurrection. You and I can depend upon the Holy Spirit. And Jesus lived as an example. He lived as the primary model that you and I are to follow. John 14, 12 says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done and even greater works because I am going to be with the Father. Why is that key? Because I'm going to be with the Father. Well, what happened when Jesus went to the Father? He sent the Holy Spirit. So because Jesus sends the Holy Spirit, you and I can do greater works. We can do the works that Jesus did. He modeled for us that reliance upon the Holy Spirit that you and I might walk in that same power, that you and I might trust the Holy Spirit the same way Jesus trusted the Holy Spirit. God, that we might trust the Holy Spirit like Jesus trusted the Holy Spirit. Let that be your prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to trust the Holy Spirit the way that you trust the Holy Spirit. Help us to lay our lives down knowing that He is able to bring us through anything. Give us the faith to walk in that power. Give us the boldness to believe that we can see the same works. And thank you for modeling that surrender to the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus. Lord, help us to follow that example and let your power come fresh upon us even now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And I want you to say it because you believe it. Say it. Amen. Here now is a question for conversation. In what ways do you need to surrender to the Holy Spirit? Let me know in the comment section. Now, one more time, if you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. You will not regret it. We put out content that's going to help you grow spiritually. And don't forget to click that notification bell so that you can actually get notified when we release videos. You can also follow us wherever you're watching us. Now, hang on just for a moment because I want to talk to you about being a generous giver. You know, there's great joy in giving. If you're anything like me, then when you find that perfect gift for your loved one or for your friend or for your family member, then you're excited to give them that gift. You want to see their face when they open the gift that you got them. You put thought into what you give to others. That's how believers are. That's how you are. You're a generous soul. Someone who, like their father, is a giver. Well, think about the fact that you and I have been blessed with the opportunity to give out of love for Jesus himself. You see, when you give financially to ministries, you're not just giving to that ministry, you're giving through that ministry to the Lord. To give a one-time gift, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. To become a monthly supporter, go to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. Everything counts, large or small, monthly or one time. However the Holy Spirit is leading you, 
Go and obey his voice and know that you're giving to the Lord out of joy, out of thankfulness. He's never held back from you. Don't hold back from him. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.